untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Monorat Devotion deck enabled by Nykthos Shrine to Nyx, which can add a ton of extra red mana as early as turn 3 in this deck, as we can maybe start the game with a Leyline of Combustion on the battlefield if it's in our opening hand. The 4 mana enchantment then says whenever we, or at least one permanent we control, becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, Leyline deals 2 damage to that player. So now removal spells will deal damage to the opponent, as well as even targeted discard spells like Thoughtseize will now deal two more damage thanks to our Leyline, and of course the more copies we have in play the better, as they will also stack in multiples. Then we also have two copies of Torbrain, which can maybe increase the damage output from Leyline, which will now deal four damage as opposed to two, and of course also adds three Red Devotion, and enables the rest of our deck very nicely. Now we don't always start with a Leyline in our opening hand, but we still have a lot of other ways to increase our Devotion. On a two mana there's a Wily Goblin, which will make a treasure when it enters a battlefield, so that can maybe help us cast one of our powerful 4 drops on turn 3 already, and then we have the full set of Burning Tree Emissary, which will add red and green when it enters the battlefield, so we can cast as many copies as we have in hand, and then maybe still follow it up with a Bitter Reunion to discard and draw. This can also maybe give the team haste later in the game, and then we can also maybe follow up a Burning Tree with a Stomp from Bonecrusher to deal 2 damage to any target, so that gives us some more cheap interaction. And then at 3 mana we can cast a Bone Crusher. we can play Fable as another way to improve our hand on the second chapter, the Shaman can also maybe make some treasure to help us ramp, and then eventually transforms into the Reflection of Kiki Jiki, and we have some cool creatures to maybe copy with the Reflection if it ever gets to that point. And then at 3 mana there's the Goblin Chainwhirler, which will deal 1 damage to each opposing creature, player and Planeswalker when it enters the battlefield, so a great answer to all the 1 mana elves in the format. And then it also adds 3 Red Devotion, so it's very synergistic in our deck, also great with Torbrain, as we can now deal 3 damage instead of 1, so it can be a nice one-sided board wipe. And then at 4 mana we can maybe get started with a Fires of Invention, which will let us play spells for free if we have enough lands in play, and that will free up our mana to maybe activate our Den of the Bugbear as a nice creature land that can also pressure the opponent very nicely. Can also maybe play a Chandra at 4 mana, which can add more mana for the more expensive spells, can also provide card advantage or damage with a first plus 1, and then the minus 3 gives us a bit of removal, dealing 4 damage to a creature. And then Leyline of Combustion we can maybe play for free if we have a Fires of Invention out, so it doesn't waste an entire turn if we happen to draw it later in the game, or we can discard it to our various discard outlets, including the Cavalier of Flame, which is another great mana sink alongside Fires of Invention, as we can maybe play it for free and then still have all our mana untapped to give the team extra power and haste until end of turn. Also very good with the Fable of the Mirror Breaker and especially Reflection of Kiki Jiki. If we give it haste we can maybe copy the Cavalier, and then when it dies can also deal more damage to the opponent if we have a bunch of lands in our graveyard. And then the mana base has 4 copies of Nykthos, of course, the key card in our deck. We've got Crucible to channel, just 15 basic mountains and then 4 Den of the Bugbear. Could also include Ramanap Ruins as an extra mana sink, especially once we get fires down. But we can certainly be the control deck in some matchups, as we're not your typical monorad aggro. And in that case I don't want to take any unnecessary damage of my mana base, since we often need to tap our lands for red mana, as you can tell. Could also play Castle Ambrith as an extra mana sink, just want to avoid the disaster scenario where we draw Den and Nykthos early lands and castle comes into play tapped at an important moment. And then uh, the final card I did not include is Fanatic of Mogus, which seems like it's tailor-made for this deck, as we're a Red Devotion, can maybe even copy it with our reflection of Kiki Jiki, although that didn't seem to come up very often, and in my testing Fanatic felt a little bit underwhelming, especially since our 4-drop needs to be somewhat impactful at stabilizing the board, which the Fanatic doesn't really do, so I just didn't feel like it was quite doing enough for me, but uh, certainly a card you could consider in other Devotion builds. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, we're missing Nykthos, get to start with Leyline, Bonecrusher on 2 and 3, then get some powerful 4 drops. I'll try it. Well, let's see what we're up against. Black, green. Okay, pass it back. And Wayfinder, so opponent on a Grease Fang. Yeah, that's gonna be a tough matchup. Don't have any graveyard hate, so just need to assemble some powerful synergies of our own. Bone Crusher can take out Wayfinder since it's not gonna be able to take out Grease Fang. Alright, Nykthos, not a bad pickup. 
So can play it for now, play Bone Crusher, and hope there's no Grease Fang on three, otherwise we're probably dead. Well, they're not instantly going for it, so that's promising. Stitcher Supplier instead. They only have green mana left, so they can't cast a can't stay away if they happen to mill Grease Fang at least. It's gonna be a Wayfinder. And plenty of vehicles in the graveyard. Still no Grease Fang. Chain Whirler's not bad. So what are the options? Just play Chain Whirler. Attack for four. If I wait to play Torbrain first, Chain Whirler would deal three damage. Still not enough to kill the Angel tokens from Parhelion. Otherwise, I would be maybe interested in waiting. Chain Whirler seems like the cleanest play here. Attack for four. And then put the pedal to the metal. Next turn, we can generate a lot of mana with Nykthos. So we should be able to empty our hands. Chandra plusing deals 4 damage with Torbran in play. And our opponent still hasn't found a Grease Fang. It's gonna be a Chariot. Okay, that can play defense quite well. So, what's the move? Chandra could also plus for mana to Stomp. Either way, we want to get Torbran out there. And then Chandra plus for mana, kill a cat, attack, versus Chandra just deal for damage, attack. Well, I guess now with Torbran out, we can actually stomp a Grease Fang and kill it, so maybe I should just keep that up. Sure. And then I'm happy to attack. And our opponent may trade the Chariot for Bone Crusher. And we'll let that happen. Okay, so going for a slightly more conservative line. Could have also maybe played Chandra, plus for mana, played Torbrain, and then still kept a Bone Crusher, so that would have been slightly better since we would have had a Chandra in play. Opponent brings back Rafine's Informant, that's fine. That's no Grease Fang. This card's Parhelion. Opponent has the Thought Seize to try and clear a path for Grease Fang, although that does trigger Leyline with Torbrain, which is 4 damage. So, what if we just Stomp? That's another 4, and then Thought Seize will just finish off the opponent. So, yeah, feel free. Awesome, managed to beat Grease Fang, a tough matchup, but got pretty lucky in the process. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And can I give up on a double Leyline opener? I don't think so. Nykthos would be awesome if we find it. In the meantime, we can stomp and play some creatures on three. Opponent on our Yurion deck. So, could be a four color Enigmatic Incarnation pile. Could be some other control variants. Okay. Taking out our creatures is going to be pretty painful for them, but uh, opponent's got the binding. At least our ley lines still deal 4 damage on the way out. And then there's one ley line left. And then a Knight of Autumn to destroy our second. Okay, so I'll probably stomp face since Chain Warlord can finish off Knight of Autumn. Could also keep the stomp available after we maybe plus Chandra in case another small creature shows up we need to take out. Could see that as well. So yeah, double ley line answered, but uh, still dealt six damage in the process. Got four points of burn with double bone crusher. All their opponents got the fires into enigmatic incarnation, so yeah, they can get a seven drop now. And that's probably gonna be game over. Titan of Industry, destroy or ley line again, gain five life maybe. 
And then next turn Yurion, if they have a land, can flicker the Titan. Opponent just going for a creature plus life gain. So I can play a Chandra. And then still have a Stomp, but it doesn't do much. So my only hope is that our opponent doesn't have a land next turn. And, uh, I mean, Chandra's not going to survive. So is there even a point in playing it? Can attack, hope they block with Titan, and then double Stomp to finish it off? Or just keep it on defense to block? Sure. Maybe that's my best chance. So they would want to attack first, and then flicker it, but they may just ignore the combat step. Okay, Titan attacks. So block, let first strike damage happen, and then fire off double stomp. So I'll go in full control just to make sure. Now fires doesn't deny them from casting anything at instant speed, just during their turn. So possible they can mess this up. Okay, that worked. That feels like a win. Still have our Leyline. And our opponent did have the fifth land, so they would have been able to flicker Titan. Although, opponent can still get a five mana card like Kenrith to take over, or a Scarab God to bring back Titan. And I haven't seen that one before, but uh, pretty effective here. And they're just ignoring a Leyline for now. So, can. Fires, play Chandra, take out the Titan. Sure. And get back Knight of Autumn to blow up our Fires of Invention, presumably. Yeah, this has been a pretty wild game. Had a promising opener. Opponent had all the answers and then kind of the perfect follow-up, despite us being able to take out a 7-drop. And the Scarab God is gonna take over very easily now. So I'm not necessarily dead on board, at least. And they can maybe finish us off here with another 5-drop. We'll see. So it's gonna take something pretty special for this Cavalier to win us the game. Nykthos, I guess, is a starting point. So Chandra can make mana, which activates Nykthos. Currently on 7 Devotion, can make it 8 if I play Bonecrusher first. And then with 8, 9 mana, can play Cavalier, give the team haste. That's the best we can do. I guess we'll be a mana short of playing another Bone Crusher, but we can pump twice with Cavalier. It's not going to be enough to win, but we might as well go out swinging. See, if they didn't have an extra blocker back, I guess this would have done it. Scarab God triggers, but there's no creatures left, and an all-out attack will do it. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We get to start with a Ley Line in play. So really missing Nykthos. Can stomp on two. Hopefully pick up a few lands to play a Fires into Chandra. We've got a powerful late game, so... Hopefully, we'll uh, get to that point. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn one Swamp into a Familiar, so Sacrifice deck. Chain Warlord's not bad. Could kill the Familiar now before they can maybe sacrifice it. Could wait to see if a Harvester shows up. Um, sure, we'll wait. Don't want my adventure to be fizzled. Our opponent's got oven. So now do I stomp? Sure. Okay, and then play Bone Crusher. And a land would be perfect. 
Then we've got the Torbrand plus Chain Warder combo as well. So play Fires into Chandra. Which can start plussing. And I'll happily attack for four. Next turn Torbrand means Chandra deals four damage. Shieldroots we can also take out now with Chandra's Minus. So we have options. Opponent did not sacrifice the Witch's Oven, which is interesting. Could play Bitter Union, but I don't want to discard Chain Warlord just to give Torbrain haste. I think I'm better off just playing the Chain Warlord. And then next turn our opponent's in a lot of trouble. We've got a spread of even and odd mana costs in case of an extinction event. And still have a bitter union to discard lands off the top. Although Fenlurker is gonna snipe that one. Still a lot of things they need to deal with, including Chandra. And this is four damage upstairs. Be easy. And now we can just attack all outs. If our opponent targets our creatures, they die to Leyline. So they're kind of out of options here. Sack Fan Lurker to the oven, bring back Familiar, still doesn't keep them alive. Sacking the food token doesn't do it either. So I don't think the missed food token from Shieldred really made a difference. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Kiruga, so another multicolor pile with fires. At least we've got our own fires, and then, yeah, hopefully we're off to a quick start. Since the opponent's late game is certainly more powerful than ours. If we cannot find a Nykthos in time. So our opponent likely has a Stomp available, so I don't think I should even bother playing Burning Tree. I can play it next turn and still play Fable. And then they'll have to take out the Shaman and we get to keep our Emissary. Torbrand's nice. Okay, so Emissary plus Fable. And then I don't really have anything I actively want to discard to the second chapter at the moment. So next turn we can Fires, plus maybe play a Torbrain, or we can get our Chandra going. Possible they just have a Leyline Binding here they can play for two mana, as opposed to a Stomp, or maybe both, and they're deciding what to do. It's going to be Binding, Exiling the fable itself, which we don't really mind since our hand's pretty good. Sacred Foundry untapped. Could see an Omnath, which we can take out with Chandra. Temporary Lockdown instead to exile our board. Fair enough. So, Fires. Plus... Do we go for Torbrain or Chandra? So, sure, Chandra. Deal two. And then with the extra mana from Chandra, we can more easily double spell. Opponent has the Omnath. Do they also have a fetch land? Nope, just a tapped one. Okay, so we can double spell. Now we cannot quite take out Omnath with Chain Warlord, even with Torbrain out, so Chandra will have to minus. But then maybe Torbrain plus Leyline hang on to the Chain Warlord. And that way, if they do try and remove our permanence, at least Leyline plus Torbrain deals quite a bit of damage. Sure. A little bit short of animating Den of the Bugbear, which could have been nice too. Now you're playing with fire. And then our best top deck would be a Cavalier Flame. Especially with the fires still out there. 
Nykthos could still help enable multiple dens, so it's not completely useless. Ah, opponent's gonna bounce Torbrain, taking four in the process. So that's not too bad. And then a stomp on Chandra, taking two. Okay. Whatever. Figure it out on your own. Get to untap. Another ley line, so. Do we like Torbrain ley line activate then? Yeah, that seems good. That's a pretty healthy attack with Torbrain out. And now if they target any of our permanents, they'll take 8. So, not sure how they get out of this. Maybe Omnath gain 4 before continuing. Cavalier's not going to do it. So we might have this. Alright, so Chain Warler deal 3, and then we can animate Den, attack all out. That should be more than enough. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, got double Wily Goblin, missing Nykthos, there's no Fires of Invention, but maybe Fable can help there. So I'll try it. Hopefully we'll draw a third land so we don't have to use our treasure to play Fable. But it's always an option. Put on green-whites. Leyline draw step late here. Can always discard it to our Fable. Is our opponent probably on an Angel life gain deck? It's gonna be a tough matchup. Turn to Jada can at least be taken out, and Nykthos wasn't a bad draw. So we'll play Fable. And then next turn we can increase our devotion some more. Maybe activate Nykthos after playing a Wily Goblin. And there's a Righteous Valkyrie as a 3-5. So we've got our work cut out for us. Leyline can go, and I'm thinking second Fable. Alright, that's a lot of Nykthos all of a sudden. Can always discard it to Cavalier, which is a good use of it. So if we were to play Wily Goblin. Devotion up to 5. Use two treasures, and then we can still play Cavalier of Flame. I can even play another Nykthos in the process to maybe give the team haste. Sure. So five mana, play another Nykthos, that's plus two. So yeah, then we can play Cavalier Activate, so that's probably worth it. And discard Nykthos Mountain. And then activate. And then do we attack with everyone? Opponent can probably block our Shaman, and that's it. That seems fine. They could also block Wily Goblin to deny more devotion. Opponent falls to 9, and we can follow up with another Cavalier. Plus we'll also have our Reflection to maybe activate, although Company is scary. Finds another Valkyrie and Overseer. So how much life is our opponent going to have here? 22? Okay. So we kind of lost one Devotion in the process too there. But I can still activate Nykthos, play Cavalier, give the team haste, and activate Reflection to copy Cavalier once again. So let's say we do that. And then I think I discard both lands since we don't really need them. And more lands in Graveyard means Cavalier also deals more damage. So activate Cavalier, and then activate Reflection. And we can discard even more lands. Don't need fires. Okay. 
And let's move to combats. And these can all attack. So it's not quite a lethal attack. Pun can easily survive. But uh, yeah, at least we're making some progress. Cavalier dies dealing six. Pun at three life. And they've got potentially six mana for angels. Starts with a youthful. So at least company is no longer a concern. But a resplendent, which will make another angel end of turn. So yeah, putting back up to 29 and they can just kill us here. Well, we had a promising start, but the angels did as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Yorion. So probably another enigmatic incarnation deck. Our hands got potential. Get to start with Leyline and then Burning Tree into Reunion on two. And then we would love to pick up Nykthos. Turn one authority. So possible it's just blue-white control. And yeah, it does seem to be the case. Maybe Jeskai. And there's Nykthos. All right. Can we resolve a burning tree? For now we can. Play Reunion. And yeah, I might discard a Torbrand since we have two. Assuming this resolves. Could also get rid of Fires since we have Nykthos to generate more mana. So I'm less, you know, afraid of not being able to empty my hand. So I could also see just hanging on to Torbrain. Since it's not like we have a creature land to activate with fires out, don't have a cavalier. So we'll see how that works out. And we'll even have a spare mana to pay for a sensor. And because of authority, there's no point in giving our team haste. So the bitter union's gonna stay in play to provide extra devotion instead. Opponent cycling a Typhoon for one, can be taken out by our Chain Warlord at least. And Transmogrify, makes sense. Agent of Treachery steals Nykthos, yeah, that sets us back on mana. But uh, we drew another one, so that's helpful. So what's the plan here? Play double Chain Warlord. That gains two but deals six. So, minus four opponent at ten, an attack. So it's not quite lethal, but it's very close. Definitely would have been lethal without the authority. And our opponent explodes. All right, I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's very slow to get going, although once we get to four mana, it is powerful. Still feels like on the draw I need to come up with something earlier than turn 3. Okay, this works. Would love to keep everything. Um, maybe get rid of the fires now that we have Nykthos to make more mana instead. Turn 1 Mystic will stick around for a little bit, but we can eventually either Stomp or Chain Warlord to take care of it. So, Green Devotion. Do I stomp the Mystic, or do I just play Wily Goblin, so next turn I can play Chandra and then stomp afterwards, although Chandra would be under pressure from Troll. Or I can just play Chain Warlord next turn, kill the Mystic, and build up a larger board first, and then Chain Warlord would also provide more devotion for Nykthos. So how much damage can they deal with the one extra mana next turn? Yeah, it could be bad if there's a Nykthos involved. I think I hang on to Bone Crusher. Just play Wily Goblin. So no Nykthos is good. And the Devotion deck doesn't have a ton of 4 drops typically, it's more 1, 3, 5. So it's gonna be a Love Struck, which the Chain Warlord can clean up the 1-1, one -one, so that's convenient. Torbrand's nice too. 
Don't think we can wait to play Torbrand and then Chain Warlord. So I'll just Chain Warlord now. And then next turn Nykthos will generate a bit of extra mana already. No attacks. Opponent stuck on three lanes. So let's say we Nykthos activate. That's five mana. Six, seven. So I could play Chandra plus four mana, play Torbrain. That sounds good. Keep our treasure. And then don't really want to give them the extra mana from Troll dying, so I'll just hang back. Opponent has got Nykthos now for Devotion. Okay, so we both get to have our fun. Let's see who can go over the top. And this sounds a good start. Untaps Forest and another Bone Crusher, so can deal a lot of damage with Double Stomp. That's 8 damage total. Um, can just clear a few creatures here, kill the forest, kill troll, start attacking Nyssa, since Chandra can also clear the beast. So we should be able to reduce the opponent's board to pretty much nothing. And then we'll start by activating Nykthos, I think. Stomp the forests. Make sure the coast is clear. Stomp troll. Minus Chandra. Don't think we quite have lethal if I activate then, do we? Time to toast your marshmallows. S'mores anyone? Alright, so yeah, we got to see our Devotion deck in action. Overall, the deck felt a little bit average. Sometimes you'll have those explosive openers with a Leyline and especially with Nykthos. When you don't, the deck feels a bit underpowered compared to the rest of the meta, so it would not be my first choice to go up the ranked ladder, but of course it is capable of those very powerful starts, which is always exciting since we have both the Nykthos opening hands as well as maybe Wily Goblin set up a powerful 4-drop, and then Fires plus Cavalier can also be a great way to end the game, so it does have multiple avenues to victory, but whenever Nykthos is involved or win percentage goes up dramatically. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.